Branding involves honing and shaping a brand's logo and assets to craft impactful and memorable visual stories. Hi, my name is Pamela Caledo and I'm a communication artist and visual storyteller. I run my art and design studio with a poetic and conceptual approach that allows me to give visual form to ideas to simplify projects that think outside the box. We will briefly go over how to create custom images in vector form in Figma to later on import them to Adobe Express. There's no need for you to use this software if your brand identity doesn't require it. But it's something that I like to teach because it's a free tool that allows you to create custom shapes you might not be able to create otherwise in Adobe Express. The reason why we want to work with vectors is because they won't lose any quality when scaling and will look neat and clean even if exported as PNG or JPEG files. Zoom in. See? No pixelation. You can select the Shape tool on the top toolbar. Select the Shape tool you want to use. Common options include rectangle, ellipse, line, polygon, etc. Draw the base shape by clicking and dragging on the canvas to draw the basic shape that resembles the object you want to vectorize. You can adjust the shape, the size, the position, and other properties of the shape by using the selection handles and adjustment options in the right panel. You can refine the shape if necessary. If the object you are vectorizing has more complex features, such as rounded corners or additional details, you can use the shape editing tools to add or adjust nodes and manipulate the shape as needed. You can create more complex shapes. If you want to create more complex shapes, you can use the pen and pencil tools in the top menu bar. Adjust the opacity of the image. In order to work better, you can lower the opacity of the image you are using as a guide from the panel on the right. With the image selected, a section called Fill will appear on this panel. By changing the percentage that appears in this section next to the image, you can adjust its opacity. Once the vector is finished, you can either delete the image or you can hide it by clicking on the eye icon in the same panel. You can group and arrange. When you are satisfied with the vectorized shape, you can group it with other related shapes and arrange them in layers as needed in the Layers panel. Think of vectorizing your image as tracing it over with a cleaner look. Connect the dots by clicking and dragging until the next point. And make sure that the shape is closed if it's going to be filled in with color. To export your vectors, do so by selecting the vector in the Tools panel on the right side. Look for the Export option. From there, you can export it as a PNG, JPEG, SVG, or PDF. To keep the vector characteristics, export it as SVG. To keep transparency behind the image, export it as PNG. Now, you're able to upload your images onto Adobe Express. Make sure that you have saved your files in SVG format. This keeps the vector form. Once you have saved the vectors in Figma, you can add them from the graphics part in your library to Adobe Express. Voila, that's it. Now your custom shapes are part of the library. We'll go over the essential process of crafting a basic brand guide to lay the foundations for cohesive and consistent brand communication. We'll explore how to create brand colors that evoke the desired mood and resonate with your audience. Select typography that reinforces your brand's personality and enhances legibility. And develop logo variations that maintain visual integrity across different applications and contexts to effectively communicate your brand identity and values across various touch points. How to create a simple style guide in Adobe Express. One option to create your style guide is to use a template already created in Adobe Express. Choose one that suits your branding or the style you want to follow. In this template, replace all the elements with those of your brand and make all the changes you see necessary until you get the final guide. If you don't find any template that completely fits your idea, you can also look for inspiration on websites like Pinterest and use an image from here as a template. To do this, import the image into Adobe Express. Adjust this to the desired size and lower the opacity to be able to work on it. Place the elements according to the base and make the changes you see necessary. First, present your visual identity in a large format so that it can be clearly seen. If there are variations of it, add it in a smaller size. Then, start distributing the different elements. Colors. Create as many squares or circles in another case as corporate colors your brand has. If your brand has primary and secondary colors, you can differentiate them using different sizes. Do not forget to name each of these colors if possible, 
at least in hexadecimal system, hex. To create these squares, select elements from the menu on the left. In the same section, go to the shapes section and in the rectangles area, select a square. Once the square appears in the work area, select it and in the fill section, give it the desired color. You can import your own color samples or choose from the library from the custom section. When adding the color code, you can look it up in Adobe Express. In the custom section, you can see both the hexadecimal and the RGB system. Typography. To present your typography, put the letter A in uppercase and lowercase together. In addition to this, it is recommended to also add the complete alphabet in a smaller size or a sentence containing all or almost all the letters of the alphabet. Be sure to mention the name of the typeface. If your brand has more than one typeface, it is probably a main typeface and a complementary typography. The main typography is usually one that makes up your logo, the one that you use to write your brand's name. The complementary typography is the one that is used for other types of text, for example, a menu in the case of a restaurant. It is recommendable to have a complementary typography that is simpler and more legible than the main one, since it will be used in smaller and longer texts. In addition, it offers a greater visual hierarchy. Graphic resources. If you have different brand graphic resources, you can implement them either individually or by showing how each of them is used. When making your style guide, make sure that the different elements are well differentiated from each other. You can do this by leaving enough space between them, or if necessary, by using separation lines. To export the guide, go to the top right area and select download. Here you can choose three different formats, PNG, recommended for images, JPEG, recommended for small file sizes, or PDF, recommended for documents. As your brand identity begins to take shape and grow, keep an eye on its trajectory. Embrace the fluidity of the creative process while staying anchored to its foundational elements. Cultivate a flexible mindset, allowing your brand to adapt and evolve. Remember, the journey of a brand development is dynamic and ever-evolving. Stay connected to your brand's unique voice and vision and witness as it unfolds and captivates the world. Now you're ready to launch your brand and share it with the world. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.